of them and it does look sort of 50 yeah. 50. No, I, I do okay. get, thank yeah. you I do get that like it does look different whether you take out of all those who um, who didn't express a preference yeah the, the statistics would be different and I know that's frustrating sometimes with our submissions when um, when people will go well there's a there's a group who didn't express a preference there's those who support those against and sometimes people will go oh look um, only such and such were in support or only such and such were against and I think we just need to make sure that all of the stats are there all the time right. yeah one other, one other question maybe for staff again so the, the whole budget's 12 mil what's this one specifically for the budget yeah so that's for upgrading as well as undergrade undergrading the existing oh, um, sorry course. yeah no, what I was meaning was for this particular like Sarah talked about for this particular patch of the that's the, right. that's the 12 million it is 12 that's million, 12 million. Yeah. yes so that includes undergrounding um, because electricity needs to be undergrounding along the whole route right as well as property purchases on the southern side so that's in the full budget so 12 million for, okay yeah. thank you all right thank you Yanni Thank you. So I was just reading in the Arborist report is basically um, just on page 465, it says in this case, 44 trees are to be removed and the draft landscape plans include the planting of 88 new trees and expected that the canopy cover will be increased within 20 years. So is that basically saying that we won't get back to the level of canopy coverage we have for 20 years? Um, if so we take as part of the tree policy, yes, it needs to be established within the 20 years. Uh, it's, I can't comment on whether it's now 10 years or 11 years. It's just the policy states up to the 20-year life cycle. So, it's, um, so we went also on the tree selection um, was part of this, and we've asked comments on it. So in, in some of them should be earlier, but it's just as per the policy, it's within 20 years, the tree. So it was interesting that this is the one thing that the one well, not one the one thing but the one thing that the panel took really seriously and we looked at seriously we looked at we went and stopped by every tree um, in our site visit um, and some of them as I say weren't really tree trees they were shrubs and if you see that in in the report there um, and fewer trees will be coming out um, now than were originally planned some of the trees are actually in really poor health at the edge some of the a couple of the bigger ones um, and would need to be coming down at some point anyway. Um, because they would be a, a danger at some point. So Sarah, I think from your comments now and from your introductory remarks, we can be assured that oh. the panel took um, yeah. the tree issue very seriously and had a, a very thorough consideration of the, the trees it, matter yeah. in general. Yeah, and, and you must remember as well that um, well, the purpose of this project is to um, make the, the bus lanes themselves and people catching the bus more attractive and lowering emissions by having fewer fossil fuel cars on the road is actually a better solution than um, than trees because you need to lower them, not just capture what's yeah, what's. Um, I, 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 I was interested in the large size tree. Yeah. Um, we tried really hard. Where, where that <laughs> one is, and also which one? Is which that, page is that? Um, so this is on page four fifty nine. Um, and is the one large tre size tree, is that in poor condition or what sort of condition is that tree in? There were, the one in the road corridor was in really poor condition. Um, there, there was, well, you can see, one in the road corridor and one in reserve. So there were seven trees in good condition on CCC land. Now there are, um, those seven are sitting in front of a set of shops. They're very beautifully manicured, um, round trees and actually may be able to be shifted um, because of the position that they're in and they're probably sellable because of the very manicured shape that they have um, and so we've specifically asked for staff to try and make that a reality. Yeah sorry yeah. I, I, I get all that I, I was just trying to understand where that so I've looked at the maps and sorry I, I can't seem to locate where the big mature tree is. Correct so some of the trees councillor is within the road corridor and that's where we need to widen it yeah. So and that will be offset with the new central median where all the new trees will be planted. So the so the streetscape will be very similar to between the rights and the um, and um, what's the oh, and Moorhouse um, that section. It's um, so it will be very similar to that. But a lot of those trees are within the road corridor that we need to extend. Sorry, I'm only talking about the one mature tree. I'm just trying to understand where the one mature tree there, is. There is more than one mature tree that's coming down. 
but oh, the sorry. one that's in the road corridor is in really poor condition. It's um, all lopsided. Next to is it the medical centre? No, well, it's a bit further down than that. But it was, um, yeah. So are you talking, Yanni, about the one large tree at the end of um, paragraph 2.1? Is that the specific one that you're referring to? Um, in the in the Arbus report. Which uh, page in our report are you looking at? Uh, in our agenda? 459. 459. Yeah. And then which... Um, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Which, which 2. paragraph? 2.2. 2.2. Sorry, 2.1. 2. The size of the trees on existing CC land to be removed includes, and it's got 18 small, 9. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if that's medium. the reserve tree. So or you're the talking road about tree. the one large one tree. One large size tree. I, was yeah. just, I just found it quite hard looking at the the diagrams and the maps to find out where, where that tree that was proposed to be removed, but I was guess I was interested in whether it was in poor condition or not. It's probably in the small print in the Harvest report, but it's quite hard as you some can Some of the trees that are the... coming out aren't in poor, poor condition, and some of the yeah. actually quite right. big size trees are not in poor condition. But as a panel, we did walk the length and looked, we had a map with all the trees on it and went down one by one. So this And had um, some really thorough looks at all of those. And um, where we could, we worked around trees. So in that context, is there an answer to where is this one large tree that's referred to at the bottom of paragraph 2.1 in the Arborist report, and is it in poor condition? They're the two specific questions that Yanni's got about this one specific tree. Council, unfortunately, don't have that report with me. Um, do you perhaps have the property number? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not next to it. A, that would be in the, um, in the table. It would have been nice to have this ahead of time, Yanni. Yeah. All right. Cool. So one of the questions, though, is, is this one tree going to make a difference to how you vote on this? And if not, is it worth our time? Yeah, let's go. Cool. I'll, I'll ask some other questions. Um, just um, what's the journey saving time that's proposed for this project? And how are we going to measure and monitor the benefit um, that we're expecting to get from the level of investment around journey saving time. I don't have the exact time with me, councillor. It's um, it's it's including for obviously travelling from Horswell in line with Wakakatai and the first section. So it's providing that central link, and the frequency on it is would be every ten minutes. The bus frequency will be on at them, but the actual time um, saved based on the we only had the data pre-COVID. Um, on the numbers that's on the buses that's included in the report. However, on the specific second um, saving, unfortunately, I can't comment on that now. Sorry, maybe I missed it in the report, but I couldn't find reference to the journey saving times. It it's a bit. It, yeah, so there may be some some saving, but the key thing is that you're not getting stuck in traffic all the time, so the bus journey is reliable. It's the same time every day, no matter what the traffic, if it's raining, if it's sunny, if it's school holidays or not, you get the same journey time, so your trip in is reliable. And we know that reliability of service is a key driver of people using it. Um, and how will we monitor the benefits of the investment? <laughs> How will we monitor the benefits of the investment for the PT? Yeah. The same way we'll monitor all the benefits across the LTP program that we're doing. We're looking for journey time reliability. We're looking to, um, as we've um, worked with um, ECAN, we're looking to achieve the levels of service that you've asked us to achieve as part of a long term plan. Right, but we keep getting reports saying that we're failing in those targets. We don't have enough infrastructure. And, and a lot of the targets around PT and transport network are long term ones. If we don't make these changes, we won't get mm -hmm. get the uplift. So the point is to have a reliable pro program, a, a reliable network, as Councillor Templeton um, just talked to. Yeah, I I guess the one concern that uh, one of the concerns I've got is from the presentation that I initially saw from Waka Katahi. Is further up, they were proposing to put in a lot of signalised crossings and traffic lights. And so it would seem that that would sort of 
be at risk of sort of um, reducing the reliability because of the increased stopping that was required for PT. So is anyone looking at the further... We're working together with Waka Kotahi um, on the network along the route. Um, buses stopping and starting is different to buses being caught in traffic and what we're trying to do is get them through the traffic. So the lights can be, the, the signals can be worked in order to facilitate buses getting through the traffic. Right. All right, thank you. So um, we've got a question from Jimmy. We've got questions from Jimmy and then from Phil and Aaron. So Jimmy, Phil and Aaron, Jimmy. Thank you, Chair. I, I follow the same the question regarding the budget. Because, uh, because at the moment, the detailed design not yet complete, in a way. When the detailed design will be complete? Once, once we have approval. Yes. Um, yes. So it's um, so the plan is currently it's forecasted within FY24. Yes. However, we would like to bring the project forward if if possible. Yeah. Um, so the key will be to commence detailed design as soon as possible. Okay, that's good. Uh, so currently, the estimate twelve million dollars. You know, not yet have been revised. The the construction price increase. Am I right? So, but, but next year, new council will review those the long term plan. Am I right? They will, might have considered revised on the. Uh, financial year 24 to 27 revised. Or that not? is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so sticking with questions, Phil and then Aaron. Phil. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sarah will probably be able to ask this. In, the, in those photos, Sarah, that are on there, that, trees. Uh, uh, really? <laughs> but, is that the photos you mean, though? The trees? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. These ones. So they're, they're termed a tree, whereas you, According you to the arborist. I would term them a shrub. When it comes to canopy cover for the city, yeah. we only assess things that are three metres and above, and many of these are not three metres. So these trees that the arborist called trees that we're going to um, have to remove to get the bus lanes in um, aren't ones that would count for our can canopy cover anyway. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I've got no problem with it. Is it. Like, How many trees did you say was coming out? 36. Many? And these shrubs would be part of that 36? Absolutely. I don't, yeah, so we're yeah, not there really. Are, there are we're not several really taking, large trees. Yeah, that yeah sure. Are quite yeah. nice, but yeah. But in essence, we're not really taking many trees out at all if you. Yeah, and there's, over, there's over 70 going back in. Yeah, no, we're far better off. If you, if you think about um, places like Memorial Avenue, Fenilton Road, um, Linwood Avenue, these main ways into the city that have got um, trees on them, like proper trees, you know, road, street trees down the middle of the road, those kind of things. Are, are streets that people really like. They're gateways to the city and they have um, um, a much higher amenity, both pedestrians and, and drivers and whoever else is going down. <coughs> and so that's what this project will do. No, oh, no, I've got no yeah. problem with that. All right, so the, the question has been asked and answered. Yeah, so, yep. sorry. What no. I'm trying to avoid is just a lot of dialogue across the table when what I really want is succinct questions and succinct answers. Okay, thank you. All right, Aaron. Um, so, yeah, just two quick questions. One is with the number of no right turns, so there's, there's some changes there. Do we model um, how much, when you change someone's pattern, say there's 20 people down a street with a car, that the extra distance they'll now drive and then we measure that and factor it into the overall benefits or not of the project? when we have no right turns? So yes, that has been included and calculated, and we, especially if the right turn banning at Domain Terrace, we did see that obviously there will be a slight increase at Littleton on the right turn, and that's why we propose that there will be a green arrow, which is currently not there. Mm. So it's that circulation. Um, then, however, there are other benefits, like people coming from Annex Road will have that opportunity to the dedicated U-turn bay, so instead of um, all those properties going around the block, they'll have it right at the bottom in a U-turn bay there. So it had minimal impact. However, yes, that was included in the modelling. Right, so there's some unders and overs in there. Correct. So a prime example is um, because Torrance Road, Torrance Road is being blocked, mm -hmm. there were 80 additional properties that needs to go via Salvin or Sylvan Street. Um, however, that also had minimal impact on the network. Right, so it doesn't doesn't increase the distance much, just the actual. Correct. Okay, that's good. And then the other one, um, something that Yanni and I have been asking for for only around 10 years, 
or slightly over, but is the evidence that the bus lanes work, that they get more people on buses. Because it's $12 million and it puts everyone else in one lane, so it, you know, it, that has a carbon increase when you slow other traffic. So the bus lanes... So the question really is... The evidence that the is there evidence that the interventions like this work if the measure is getting more people on buses? Yeah. <laughs> so the the answer is yes, there is evidence. I don't have it today. I'm sorry, and it's not necessarily based here in Christchurch, but there is worldwide evidence, as <coughs> Councillor Templeton talked to, that making. Uh, ensuring that your PT trips are reliable and you can rely on how long it's going to take you and you can also rely on the fact that when you walk out your door and down to the bus stop it is going to be there, if it says it's going to be there, that that improves PT uplift. We have a whole number of other issues in our society at the moment that we are dealing with and none of these solutions are short term solutions and you don't see a quick result. We are building these facilities for the future Christchurch. But other cities are very, very different to ours, so it's hard to compare. Well, the question as the question has been asked and answered, yeah, yeah, just, and I deliberately um, rephrased it so that it was easy to answer. Sorry, in sorry, Mr. Which Chair, I wasn't it. clear enough because um, my colleague next to me is going, are they? Yes, uh, 4,000 people per square um, kilometre density is a lot different to 280. It's quite different. So... It means you've got a lot more people near your public transport, so it does does make a big difference. So okay. is the international research relevant yes. to this situation? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, is it, and it would be good to see it, yeah. but so, more so than that, isn't it important that we do our own research to go, hey, we put a bus route on Papanui Road or wherever, or Colombo Street back pre-quake, and these were the uptake in numbers. Yes, this did happen, this happened. And pre-quake, we had a massive uptake in numbers, because of the facilities that we put in. And there's been changes since, and, and our society has faced a number, particularly here in Christchurch, has faced a number of changes. And, 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 we, yeah. and, and I, we're not here to debate this with you at, at every meeting, and we, we're looking to see how we can provide oh, you that we, advice. We don't want to debate it a, either. We just want to see it once. So, But there is also oh, clear and yeah, and evidence, like evidence that in order to meet, and, and you as council have declared a climate emergency, and you have a clear strategic objective for us to do everything we can to meet the climate challenges that we have and there is clear evidence worldwide that improving your PT system, getting more people on, on, on a single vehicle is better for the environment than having everybody driving their own cars. And we have levels of service that we set so through annual long-term plans and annual Absolutely. plans around reliability and um, journey times. Yes. So all of this is aligned with but not the overall strategic position that we have agreed. Yeah, but Mr Chair, not passenger term, numbers. And we, it's a long-term trip for you, to yeah. use yeah. a transport analogy. Yeah. Long-haul trip. All right. Bus, so I've got can I just say bus passenger numbers are our, uh, now up on our um, council website and the key indicators in our climate stuff. Um, and they're available in the ECAN agendas too. Great. Okay. We now need to um, conclude any further questions on this. So I've got Phil and Melanie. Phil. Thanks, Lynette. On, on the picture, it may be just on, on the plans, it might only be drawn that way. In the long run, the whole road will be asphalt or wall to wall, or just the um, margins that we're working on. So when the, when the road is finished, will the whole thing be re, re asphalted? Yes. No, it, it won't be the complete route be resurfaced where applicable. If it's poor quality, then yes, it will be included as part of the project. Okay, because down at the other at the town end at the moment, where Isaac's working, they're doing the margins, which is cool, and that's working there. But I just it's all. So when we do a project, um, and when we deliver a project, we're looking to deliver the best value for the community that we can. So that doesn't always mean we go in and resurface the whole road if there isn't a need to do it. As we've talked to in the past, we are looking to do that appropriately um, moving forward, and it'll be the same on this project. Thank you. Melanie? Um, I, if Sarah's all right with that, I'm wanting to move it because this is in my ward. Absolutely. Yep. All right, thank you. Well, that's a perfect um, 
sequencing into the next part then. So this is moved by Melanie and seconded by Sarah. All right, so moved Melanie, seconded Sarah. Is there any discussion? Melanie. Um, just quickly to say that um, the community board um, was fully supportive of um, this and their submission. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Short and sweet. That's good. Thank you. Any other... the way up to Morehouse Ave. So there is no way that this cannot be effective. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I appreciate the work that has been done on this and I hope that the benefits that are proposed do get achieved, but it is, it is hard to see from these reports um, around the benefits that we're, we're aiming other than a very high level, you know, improve reliability. But I do think as a council, we, we do need to actually put some metrics in place where we can clearly measure the impact of our spending. The, the, the other irony, I think, is that we still haven't had really a plan for light transit, rapid transit. So um, you start to think like what's happening with mass transit um, in, in the city? Where's the vision? This is one of the fastest growing areas of the city. And if you were ever going to look at a corridor for um, rapid transit, it would seem like this would actually make a lot of sense. And I, so I'm kind of concerned that we're so far behind in that decision and discussion that we're then approving these these bus priority lanes. Um, but I totally understand the importance of of this. I am concerned about some of the safety aspects as well, and I hope that there can be a process to review it um, as it goes forward, just to ensure that if there are safety concerns with how things are running, then they can be they can be addressed. But, you know, fundamentally, the idea of having people catching public transport from Halsall to the city centre makes a lot of sense because of the growth. But um, I just think we do need to get clearer about the way in which we measure our levels of investment into public transport, because for the number of years that I've been sitting around this council table, despite the fact that we've been investing in these things where we're told that there will be benefits, actually in our, in our levels of service, we see consistently from month to month that we're failing to achieve the targets that we set. So I do think at some point we need to think about what we actually do differently to get better outcomes than just doing things that we've done in the past because that might lead to a better future. But I, I just want to acknowledge the work that's been done on this. Um, I appreciate there's been a lot of effort put into saving the trees, which, um, you know, and I, I appreciate what's, what people ha have, have said. I, I do think we need to get the urban forest plan in place um, sooner rather than later because... You know, having tree canopy lost for 20 years when we take out trees for these sorts of projects to me is just not not acceptable. And we do need to um, have a much more aggressive approach to replacing the lost canopy coverage um, when we when we decide on these sorts of projects. But um, I'm happy to support, but it is a project that I will be watching um, with interest and hoping that there is good measurement of its um, investment. Thank you. Thank you. Sam. Just really briefly, I'm happy to support it as well. Um, I think we could give it a chance, and if it doesn't work, at least we'll have two lanes on either side of the road uh, to look at other modes. So I, I don't think it's the end of the world uh, today, and we might as well utilise that NZTA subsidy, knowing that actually if this doesn't, like Aaron has referred to, stack up and begin to provide benefit, we can change that. Thank you. Aaron. I'm surprised Joni's going to... is actually happy to support it. Um, but the... Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm actually not happy to support it, and I'll do a few groans around the table, so I'll let you get your groans out. Uh, 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 right, there we, can we move on? Um, the, and, and the, for me, the reason is that the numbers just, and like Yanni pointed out, we're failing our targets. We're, we're not getting there. And the point I'll raise today, I won't raise any of the others from the past, is that this council's declared a climate change emergency or crisis or whichever one you want, want to call it this week. We've declared it. Um, and there's, and the thing is, if you want to do something about it, we have a limited budget. Um, we can't just keep printing and borrowing money. There is, a, there is a pot size that you can spend on climate change. And is this the best $12 million you can spend on climate change when we're not seeing more people on the buses? Uh, if we do see more people on the buses, great, but the ones that are coming down 
the bus lane on Cranford Street with six people on on average is not saving the planet. And so $12 million is 1.2 million trees we could plant in this city in the coming year. They could all be natives. So think how you spend, it grown all you want, think how you spend your money, but back it up with actual evidence and start saving the planet, not saving your virtues. Sarah. I'm still waiting for the evidence that bus lanes don't um, get people out of cars and things like that. And it's interesting both to see um, colleagues putting forward this as a project that will um, potentially be a great car facility in the future, um, and also uh, gaslighting us on um, the, the emissions. And interestingly, it only takes five passengers on a bus for it to be more efficient than the same number of cars on the road. Um, and so having six on the bus is, um, is a really good move. Uh, the bus that I catch into town in the mornings is chock-a-block full, standing room only on the 28, and, um, and that's been um, really good and increasing as well. But what is this report? This report is not a report on um, the overall bus network. It's not a report on mass rapid transit. Uh, it's not even a report on um, why bus lanes work. It's a report where the hearings panel was asked to make a recommendation on the design of the bus lanes that council had already decided to do. And that's what we're here to decide today. As a country, we have um, a, uh, a climate target. As a city, we have a target. There are going to be vehicle, um, vehicle kilometres travelled reduction targets for us as a city set by December this year. That's in the emissions reduction plan. That is likely to be, um, I would think, around 25% reduction in VKT by 2030. Um, as a city, if we're going to get there, we need to give people good, reliable options so that they can get in. In Auckland currently, more, pass more people go over the Harbour Bridge in the mornings um, during the rush hour on a bus than they do in a car. And that's because the buses are really efficient, they're reliable, um, and there's a lot of them, they're really frequent. Mass rapid transit, absolutely, that needs to be in place, but it takes a long time. The, the planning, yes, way too slow, but it takes a long time to actually put that in place, and it's going to be billions. So for $12 million, getting people on buses, connecting up these two sections is actually a really good deal. Um, you cannot be both for climate action and keep telling people that you believe in the climate emergency and consistently find excuses to vote against measures to reduce emissions. Thank you. Mike. Thanks. Um, I'll, I'll be supporting this. It's actually a, a very good initiative and to link up um, Lincoln Road, so it actually is complete. It's, it's going to be hugely, hugely ben beneficial. Um, look, I, I think the reality is um, actually as... as um, as a council, city council, and, and I believe um, um, the regional council, ECAM, we, we've let down public transport through lack of investment. Um, and when you look at our long-term plan, we, we've got um, less than 7% of the transport budget goes into public transport. You know, that pretty much tells us why we, we struggle to get huge PT numbers. Um, but I, I believe that actually with the PT futures that we have... Um, obviously approved and it will get implemented, we can change that around. Uh, but it, it's not just the bus routes um, and priority lanes, it's also the, the, the frequencies uh, as, as well and, um, and also the types of buses which will help um, reduce uh, emission. And, and I think this term we've actually worked quite uh, collaboratively with um, ECAN um, and have made, a, I think, um, a big step change in our direction where we want public transport to head. Um, we've just seen Environment Canterbury reduce their, their fees, which is going to be huge. We saw with um, the government um, putting half price, the quick uptake, the big uptake that had in patronage. Um, th this, is, this is the right thing to do, and it's always a shame um, when, when we come to things like public transport or, or cycling, we, we have the constant critics of that that don't believe that um, they're actually going to be create significant benefits to um, environments and people's way of life when we know they do. Um, and it's a shame that we, when we have international experts, suddenly Christchurch is different to every other international city in, in, the, in the world. You know, we're not actually that unique and it's actually really important to look at what evidence is around to take the best stuff and actually apply it, apply it here. You know, I, I don't take the bus often but the few times I have, actually, they have been busy, and it's been really impressive to actually go past cars that are that are parked 
uh, you know, waiting in stationary queues because of the congestions. And, and you do not solve congestion by, by building more roads. That's known. That just increases the amount of cars coming in, which will increase um, pollution. Um, and everyone just gets into the same position by actually giving people true alternative mode choice. That's how you actually start to move people around. Um, and as a council, that's what we have been doing. And we'll see the benefits of that very, very shortly. And I think when you look at some of the existing bus lanes, we all already do. Um, so it's, it's a shame we have the constant um, moaners about public transport. Um, maybe you should try riding it sometime. You'll see the benefits yourself when there's a priority lane. All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against? So Aaron against, that's carried. Thank you. Item 18, Central City Cycle Facilities Connections Safety Improvements Project, Armour Street. So there's a staff presentation on this one, as I understand this, and then um, we'll move into any questions. Thank you. Good morning, just. Um, okay, so this is one of the 20 projects that was put together um, to improve cycling accessibility around the CBD. This one in particular came out of a, a survey that showed that there was a significant um, safety issue with tram tracks and cyclists, and that this one piece of road was the largest contributing factor to that problem. So this project, albeit somewhat small, is to mitigate that safety risk. So that's effectively what I've just said, where um, it's on one side of the road, it's on the northern side of Armagh Street, We've got a short section of off-road and then a, um, the rest of it's on-road and it just removes the, the major issue with cyclists being put parallel and then uh, a lot of the instances have been where cars have squeezed a cyclist to the point where their wheels drop in. And once their wheels drop into the tram tracks, their history. I, I actually heard somebody in a cafe talking to somebody they hadn't seen for a while and they were explaining why their arm was in a slung and it was exactly that scenario. Um, I felt like going up and saying, oh, we're going to fix that, but I sat there and quietly had my coffee. Um, so this is where it is. Um, Barry, do you want to talk to this? Uh, yeah, I can do. Um, first thing I wanted to highlight is that the red lines, they're not tram lines, they're dimension lines, so that kind of misled us a little bit. So yeah, the facility begins at Rolleston Avenue, its western end, and is a off-road facility near the tram stop. And the scheme essentially creates a consistent cycle lane on the north side of Armagh, between Rolleston Avenue and Durham Street. We're removing some of the parking spaces at 11 at one location and one further east. Now, where the single parking space is being removed, that is to facilitate cyclists being able to more comfortably approach the tram lines at a right angle, you might say rather than at an acute angle, which puts them at greater risk of being in the tram, tram line path as such. So as you can see on the photograph, the cyclist can now approach it much more safely and reconnect with the cycle lane approaching the signals at Durham Street. Um, but it provides a much safer uh, path for cyclists to take and yeah, a continuous facility. Um, hi again. Um, so I did the consultation on this project. Um, as you can see from here, we emailed 28 key stakeholders. 
and those ones there were included. Uh, we also delivered to, I didn't put the number up there, sorry, we delivered to about 60 properties on both sides of the road, along the road, um, and also to number 69, which is that uh, office block that we're gonna remove the parking space. Um, from the 60 leaflets that we delivered, we got six submissions via email. Um, and as you can see up there, um, the residents were concerned for the loss of parking. They do have off-street parking, but they were more concerned about their visitors. Um, and then we've got the other ones here. Um, they supported it, the cycle lanes, but not necessarily on Armour Street. And we had another submission uh, wanting additional safety measures. Okay. Okay, I guess the major point on there was that um, what did we do about it? We considered the items on the previous slide being um, previous. the raised platform, the slow zone, the painted cycle lane. But the intent of this project is to actually get people away from the tram lines. So some of those things were not consistent with that goal. Um, the parking removal, as per the um, parking policy took priority over the other uses of that land and um, it is really about just that shift across give us the ability to move the cyclists away from it it's um, Alma Street's a natural desire line for mm -hmm. people coming in off the unicycle cycleway they um, can then use this route to go down and meet up with the promenade. From the promenade, they can go up Papua Nui Parallel. They can go towards the city. They can get on to um, Worcester Street for the um, Rapa Nui route. And they can go further on south and um, meet up with the other major cycleways. So it's quite an important little linkage for people coming in on the on unicycle. So, any questions? All right, thank you. So, are there any questions on this? So, I've got Melanie and then Sam. Melanie. For the car parking proposed to be removed, and what's the length of time on those parking spaces at the moment? And oh, God. <laughs> I think I recall they've paid 120 minutes car parks. Okay, so people parking there wouldn't be parking there all day. There'll be cars that are. Moving in and out? Yeah, for an hour or two, but they're, they're certainly paid parking spots. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to park over there. Okay. Thank you. Sam. Thank you. Um, so, obviously, 3.2.2 disadvantage the loss of 12 on street car parks. Um, I mean, flicking through the submissions, that was, as you pointed out, a theme. I was just trying to understand with the initial proposal, how many car parks were proposed to remove? So was it, was it 20 and we've had a compromise, or was it 12 and it's still 12? That's 12 and it's still 12. Okay, so how have we Can taken we, into account the submissions' views, the submitters' views? Um, by aligning those views with the council parking policy, which says that this, what we're doing here, should take priority over parking. Yes, sorry, I'm probably not clear. Sorry. What I was saying and, was, and we did look. Our initial design looked to minimise the loss of parking anyway. Yes, but if if the theme is still that they're concerned about parking. So are we taking into account their views or just the policy, a council policy? No, we took into account their views, but we couldn't achieve the goals of this project. Right. So do, how did we take into account their views? We, well, we, didn't, we didn't provide alternative parking opportunities specifically. It was just really the, the policy states that improving safety for vulnerable road users, particularly cyclists and pedestrians, right. takes a far higher priori priority than uh, on-street parking. But if, the, if we'd gone out and asked for community feedback and the theme is they're concerned about the loss of parking, are we saying we've sided with a policy, not with the submitter's views? We're, we're saying that we had um, minimised the parking loss in order to achieve a good result within the scope of the project. Right, and that so in order to achieve that, we couldn't increase the parking. Right, so what other changes were made as a result of submissions? Uh, I don't think 
the ring. No, I don't believe there were any changes any. made. This any. this was um, what do you call the minor say? This was an informed, not a consultation. Yeah, what we we it wasn't a formal consultation as the um, the residents down there didn't have um, influence over our project. It's a project that had to be done for safety. So for a safety project, we don't go out and say, do you support or do you not support this? We went out and said, this is the project that we're going to put down this street. Have we forgotten anything? Do we have to take anything into account before we come and put this project yeah, through? That's what I'm trying to understand. So they obviously have said we need to take into account car parking, but we haven't made any changes to the proposal at all. I'm just trying to understand what the point of telling them was if we've changed nothing. That's why minor safety programs that are have a goal of safety, um, like this one, uh, done as an inform. So we're just looking for for ways in which they could be a, we could improve it. Sorry, but not ways in which we could debate should we do it or not because it's a safety project. So what we've got in front of us is a set of officer recommendations which have been arrived at by looking at the policy, looking at the submissions and giving our staff's professional opinion by way of a recommendation. Obviously the political side of that, the balancing with the tensions of the yeah, oh, safety versus parking, is that that's our role. Yeah, I'm just not clear though on why we would go and consult if actually we've made no changes. Like what, what's the, the, the staff time resource to be actually going out there and potentially raising expectations when, in fact, we've done nothing. I think what I heard staff say was that they took the feedback into account, but it didn't result in any changes because they took the professional view that the policy um, was the guiding factor in a safety project. That doesn't mean that they didn't have any regard whatsoever to the submissions, but what it does mean is that the submissions didn't result in any change because of the, the role that the policy and the safety aspects of this project played. So the policies taken precedent over not, not just the well, policy we took each of those yeah, items yes. like the raised platforms for example and worked them against our goals and determined that the solution that had been put together by the technical staff was in fact the best solution that they got it right first time basically and I didn't do it so I can say they got it right first time right and significant regard was had to policy is the other thing that comes for me through this very clearly. Um, the, the, the policy, I mean, I think maybe to use um, Sam's words, I'm not sure, but the policy took precedent um, because of the safety aspects of this project and that's the position that staff have taken us the right way forward. Yeah, that's correct. if we just comment, I mean, we, we certain, I certainly did reflect on what the feedback was and just revisit it to, just to check whether or not we could still deliver the safety benefits of this project by modifications to the parking restrictions and on that examination we couldn't deliver that safety benefit by changing the parking restriction. So let's put the question a different way. In your considerations in making this recommendation, did you upweight the safety benefits of this project rather than upweighting the parking considerations that were raised in submissions? That's correct. Thank you. Moving on to the next question, I've got, um, so that was Melanie, Sam, Jake. Oh, go first, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, no, I've, oh, right. Okay. I was just going through my list. So Jake, yeah, you go next. Um, can I just clarify, if there was feedback from the consultation, or it's the submissions that didn't compromise the underlying safety, core critical elements of this proposal, would you have listened to it? We'd listen to it all anyway, and we would have implemented anything that we could do. Oh, that's great to hear. It's fantastic. Anything further? Aaron, Phil, Yarni. Aaron. So, uh, a follow-on from Jake's there. Um, that what's the distance between the tracks and the cars? Because this is for stopping people riding in the tracks and falling off, isn't it? Distance between the tracks and the cars. Sorry, you, you're looking for how much the cyclists are isolated from the tracks or the, well, the cars the, are over Well, we're the taking tracks. out all the cars to so the cyclists can move over further um, and not ride near the tracks. That's the point of this, so you don't get your wheel caught in the track and flip yourself. 
Yeah, and what's the distance? So the question oh. is, what's the distance between okay. the track? Okay, so then a follow on from Melanie's technical point there <laughs> is once we get further down Armour Street past Cranmer Square and into the next block and then the next block right past Victoria Square, does the distance between the vehicles and the path change? Because it would appear on the Google Maps that Melanie... Um, so eloquently referred to uh, as it would be exactly the same unless the maps are doctored. It's approximately one metre. Yeah. I'd say I'd estimate approximately a metre separation. Yeah. Right. But then once they ride, I mean, because we'll need signage to tell them that you've been okay in this block, but the next block you're going back to what it used to be. So are they further out? Well, I don't know. So are the tracks further out in the next two blocks? Yeah, I think it's tapered. Hmm. Talking about this section here. Yeah, further on down here. S through the chair, can I just add that the, the staff did a, a survey to look at the key clash points, um, and I don't know if they've covered that. But that's what informed this decision to come to this point and look at this point, and that's why they've come to. to that's why this this report is coming to council today. So there's been a lot of pre work done yep. to look at the whole central city and the issues facing it, and um, the feedback from the surveys has come back. And this is a particular point of conflict for cyclists. That's why they're addressing this point on the whole network. Other points may come up in the future, but this is. This is a point in time now that we're trying to address. Yep. Oh, so you're, you're saying, Lynette, is people don't ride into the tracks in the other two blocks? Saying the feedback we got through the survey highlighted this part of the network as an issue for cyclists, and it is also where we've had reported accidents. Correct, Clary? Correct. Yep. But not further down. Not in no. Latimer Square. I'm oh, sorry, not Latimer, um, Victoria Square. Well, they Lazar. didn't report it further down, or we haven't had reported accidents further down. This is where we have had reported accidents and where we had a hotspot from feedback from users. Right. All right. Phil had a question. So I've got Phil and then Yanni. Phil. So I just can't see it. It might be here. Uh, how many accidents are. Uh, have we had or reported that instigated this to happen and how much are we going to dip out on the cost of 12 and, and revenue on the tr cost of 12 parking paid parking meters that are going to be removed please that, sorry that survey information was in the original council report and i don't have it with me today right, oh sorry okay i'm sorry I... Are, are you sure that paid parking meters down there can I get an answer from... I, I need to just get an answer from staff if I can, please. So I can't answer your question with regard to how many, but it was significant enough for this to be put forward as one of those 20 projects, and it was discussed at the time. Okay. That's not a good answer, I'm sorry, but I don't no, have that. But it does come back to the first slide of your presentation, which is that this is about the implementation of a resolution that was passed some time ago around these issues in general across the central city. Yes. Yep. All right, further questions. So that was Phil Yarni. Thank you. Um, I was just interested in, the, given the feedback that we had, um, if we considered bringing forward the accessible city budget of 340,000 to address the concerns that were raised in the submissions, and also given that the time that we've invested in what's proposed. I'm not aware of what is planned for alternative projects. So, um, no, there was somebody from planning here before, but they're not here now. Um, we were given a brief, and we've met that brief, and I'm sorry, but I cannot comment on right. what future plans might be for this area. Cool. So it's... Visible it's, city, I don't... Yeah. I don't... This is not... I don't think it This has, won't be exclusive anyway. It won't cause... Right. 
it, it's we've got in 29 30 and 30 31 340,000 and it's for network transformation project um, to improve access to roads and footpaths and so I just wondered like if we you know like it would seem sensible to do it at the same time given how much this project's costing you know, it's about a quarter of, of what we or a third um, of what we've got on budget and given the feedback that we've had from residents you know, it would seem that um, possibly the concerns that are being raised, you know, the threshold treatments, making it more of a slower zone, would be um, something that we should consider. So, I, like, I, I guess I'm just concerned that we'll spend the money now doing the cycling improvements and then we'll come back in a few years' time and have another project to change it again. I note we've also got a project for Rolleston Ave as well, which is coming quite soon to also improve this intersection. And I just wondered how that had been taken into account for for this project. So, Len, do you want to make a comment here? So, I just want to set a context for councillors. This is a very specific project of work which is specifically designed to address specific safety issues. Um, the total quantum is relatively limited and it has very defined uh, benefits. There is a trade-off with a whole range of other things. Uh, parking with other projects that we could potentially do to improve the cycling environment in the city. What I would recommend to you is that you consider this project in that context and reach a very sensible decision, which really requires the trade-off between the safety benefits and the potential inconvenience, admittedly, for visitors of the residential part of this, uh, this part of the city. Um, we are not in a position to open up a whole range of other projects at the same time. This is a very specific proposal. I think the team has put to you the investigation that has occurred and there is a very clear recommendation. All right, right so, so what percentage, let's... sorry, just in terms of the submissions, what percentage were opposed and what percentage were in favour? Just, just to be clear, Sam said that before they didn't ask that question. So we can't tell you the oh, answer. Okay. So from my reading, it's about three three quarters against, about a quarter for. It's from the, that's the feedback we would say, but it's not. All right, so sticking with questions, have you got further questions, Yanni? Um, yeah, well, like, I guess there's a general question, like, if we're doing improvements for areas where we've already got budget on, even though it's a few years out, what's the process to align that work so that we do it at the same time? Because I, I appreciate what, um, you know, uh, the senior executive advice is, but it also, when we get the submissions from the people that we've got, and, you know, if you look at the submissions, one's from Christ College, um, the maintenance Yeah, so manager. the question is... So, so the question is, like, based on the submissions and the idea that people are concerned, um, what's the process for us to consider the other objectives we have for the same piece of street where we've got money on budget to address the concerns that people have raised? Thank you. Lynette, is that something that you're wanting to answer? Is that something you're able to answer? That might be the better <laughs> way of putting the question. It's a better question. Um, the process we would go through in those submissions is we would provide feedback to those submitters on what is coming and what, what we can do now and why we're doing it and what we would do in the future. Often when we get submissions, it's on a broader range of topics and not necessarily to do with the project that we're trying to achieve and the outcomes that we're trying to achieve. So we work with our submitters to give them that feedback, let them know what's coming. As um, Lynn indicated just then, this is a specific project, del delivering outcomes on a specific safety issue, and we are looking to make sure we um, future-proof as much as possible. It, it, has, it isn't big implications for the network. And so um, future projects that are out 10 years um, will still be able to go ahead, and we will be looking to achieve that. What we do as far as aligning projects, we do that with you as staff to try and achieve that at the time of the annual plans and long-term plans where we can. 
given resources and deliverability issues. All right, thank you. So now I've got questions from Mike and then Sarah. Mike. Thank, thank you. Just a quick question. But the, so the car parks between um, Park Terrace and Chester Street, um, they're, they're, all, they're not paid car parks. They're not metered. Yeah. I've just, I do admit, and they're there. They're all all day parking. Yep. It was the one near yep. Quake City, yep. which I was. Well, yeah, no, that's good. So oh, that, that is a paid one. May I just comment there in, in defence of Mr. Hayes? The person who did all of the work on this is extremely unwell at the moment, and um, so we had to bring Barry in to cover the questions. Yep. And no. that's that, 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 that's fine. I'm just just saying that so I can then go to another question. Um, the, the question is like. <laughs> There's obviously around um, Cranmer Square in that area, there's a number of, um, I guess, time-restricted car parks and all-day um, parking as, as well. I'm, I'm just wondering, um, and I guess it's slightly outside the scope, but do we need to actually have a look to make sure we've got the percentage right of, of time-restricted that will enable um, people to have visitors um, and people to actually go to the um, square compared to all-day parking? So, so you probably can't answer that, but I mean, I mean, the goal was to cater for cyclists going there, going through that section twenty four seven. So we'd need to implement the no stopping to maintain that clear path all the time. Yeah, it, it's not so. Parts. I guess it's not so much um, that that area there. It's like when we when we rem when we say right, we're going to need to remove these car parks for safety, which is fine. Um, do we have a look at just the surrounding area and saying, have we got the right mix of um, time restricted versus, um, you know, all day parking to actually serve the community that's um, living living there? I'm just wondering if we take that into account when we actually do this type of um, decision making. So does the removal of these car parks lead to a review of parking time limits on other car parks in the area? Yes, so I'll be... Yeah, well, we're in discussion, I guess, with the, the area engineer for this particular area who will be looking at the bigger picture in terms of parking availability. I'm also focused on the Kilmore Salisbury project, which is the parallel routes further north of here. And the parking restriction strategy will also be taken into account there. So that, that displacement will be part of the um, design considerations there. So, yes. Cool. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Sarah. All right. So we're done with questions. It's always a dangerous question to ask. We've spent quite some time on this item. Um, all right. So um, do I now have a mover for the recommendation? Yeah, Jake will move. move. Mike will second. Is there any discussion? Yanni. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, I mean, obviously, as part of the draft annual plan, the amendment to review the accessible city um, projects were was ruled out of order um, and now we have a very classic example where we're going to spend money in a stretch of the corridor that we've got $344,000 on to do um, I guess pedestrian and cycling enhancement and yet we're going to be spending another 120 k today with um, the majority 66% roughly of submitters concerned with what we're proposing and no visibility in the either the report or in the um, uh, design of the future works. So I just think this is really, really inefficient. And I hope at some stage council can see fit, given the financial pressures that we're under, to start looking at the accessible city projects, the $188 million that we've got on budget, um, that we could um, look at getting better synergy around what we're trying to achieve by either using uh, existing projects to achieve some of those outcomes, uh, talking to our community about what we're trying to achieve and if it's still relevant. Um, because even the accessible city plan doesn't have Armour Street as a place for cycling. And I think when you look at Armour Street, what's recognisable is that it's one of the few east-west streets still remaining um, in the central city in the core. And so I'm really concerned about this proposal. I totally acknowledge the need to try and get a safer outcome, but I am swayed by the submissions that I've read that talk about the need to do more and concern that this actually doesn't go far enough to addressing the safety concerns. Um, so I think 
you know, really the sensible thing to do would be to bring forward the accessible city work, the 344,000 um, if, if um, we wanted, and to come up with a coordinated approach to improving the safety in, in this area. But, you know, I think it would be sad to approve what's been put forward um, when we've had um, a number of submitters raising concern. Uh, and also that really we've got a longer term solution that we're trying to achieve as a city that isn't being addressed through this work. Uh, that seems that it might be able to alleviate some of the concerns that submitters have raised. So I won't be supporting this today. Um, I, I should also just point out that there is $5 million on budget for Rolleston Avenue as well. That intersection with the Armagh Street Bridge, the tram tracks, the pedestrian crossings, I mean, that does need a real good consideration how to improve its safety. And so that's also my other concern with what we're proposing to do now is that it doesn't give us the best outcome in terms of the uh, long-term view. Um, so I would support us doing um, having a look at this area in a much wider level and coming back with a, uh, a better improvement. But I don't, I don't think what personally um, we're doing today is a good use of resource or money. Um, and I think we need to be much more coordinated around what we're doing in regards to central city projects. Thank you. All right, so, oh, Alan. Yeah, it was interesting in the submission from um, Christ College that they pointed out that the majority of the accidents they see are actually at the corner. So as the people are coming around, they're turning the crossing across those tracks. So that is, uh, it, and not along the stretch of the road. Um, and I can, going through there now and then you see how that happens. Um, I agree with Yanni and the other submitters that um, have all said that they didn't want those um, car parks removed. Um, I'm in favour of an, as much intensification in the inner city as possible uh, because that'll lower, the, that'll lower our carbon footprint. Um, and uh, so I will um, not support this because um, it could put people off living in there and I encourage as many to live there as possible. And you've got to ride next to the tramps tram tracks further up and uh, I will say this because I've done it myself, you only do it once, you only ride in them once on a, on a skateboard, scooter or a bike. Okay. Um, so continue. yeah, it's like riding in sand, you only do it once. Sarah. Thanks for that. Today um, this comes down to a couple of things. The first is that it's safety versus convenience um, and we know that one of the key drivers for people um, deciding not to bike is um, risk and safety. And the unicycle route that comes down through Hagley Park captures a broad range of, you know, Rickett and Fendleton, all of those areas. There's um, over 7,000 um, rides over the counter at the Armagh Street end just in the last seven days. It's a really, really highly used route. And then from there, people need access into town. It is clear in the Local Government Act, although frustrating at times, that we do need to engage with residents when things um, impact them and outside their house. But that isn't always um, necessarily raising expectations that everything will be done. It depends on the form of engagement that we do. To make, um, to make it really clear, what's the cost of not doing this? The cost of not doing this is more people injured. And I take objection to um, Councillor Kewen framing this as a cyclist's problem. Mm -hmm. A cyclist issue with them riding into the tracks mm -hmm. and you only do it once, those kind of things. It's really clear from this that with the lack of space available for people biking in this area, it is a really frequent occurrence that cars squish them off into the tram track area with no space available not to go onto the tram tracks. We haven't heard from the most impacted group um, who are actually the cyclists. There are 7,000 um, in the last week over that, that counter in Armagh Street. We haven't heard from those that have ended up on ho in hospital and the circumstances around those. And I'm sure that if we had, there would be a significant number of um, submissions in those. But the focus was more limited, um, and we need to acknowledge that. Yes, an email went out to one cycling organisation. It's clear that they didn't submit. They're a volunteer group. But we, what you didn't do was a broader engagement, and um, we needed to have done that, and the, the results will be different. Safety is the key driver for people biking. We need more people biking. You cannot both be in favour of climate action and in favour of car parking. Melanie. 
Uh, the, the main, well, I obviously support um, space for cyclists, but the, the main reason in this area I actually really am quite keen on removing those car parks is because one of the most um, dangerous events when you're a cyclist is when a car door opens on you and you clip the side, because I've done that myself and it's awful. Uh, and from my detailed analysis of Google Maps, um, you can see that if someone was to open a car door in that area, you would be in a tram track. I mean, you would, or you would be moving to the side if you could, and you know something dangerous could happen. And I think for me, that makes it super clear that this is absolutely the right thing to do. Thank you, um, Phil. <coughs> yeah. Um... I agree with Sarah, there's a lack of space down there. Now, when the tram tracks were put in, this is probably an un unforeseen consequence, but if you look at um, the Google Maps picture that um, Melanie so nicely pointed out to us, um, there's actually, a, and it'll cost a little bit more, but there's enough room down there for everyone. If that curb was moved into that extremely wide berm around about a metre or 1.2 metres, move the cars across, there's then enough room for the cyclists to go in and everybody's happy and you don't lose the much needed parking down there because we're the first to say no one's not so much here, no one's allowed to park off street anymore, in theory, if, it's, uh, if they follow the new rules, and now we're telling them they can't park on the road out in front of their house. So I think we should perhaps look at it and... Maybe go ahead and do this, but don't lose sight of moving that curb back to make the cut, make enough room for everybody because space is the problem. Thank you. Mike. That sounds very expensive, Phil. Um, f f firstly, um, it's up to developers whether they actually put in car parking in their residential developments. Um, so that's a choice they make and a choice people make when they, they buy. Um, the houses, there's actually um, over 4,500 unmetered um, car parks within the central city. So we're, we're talking 11 car parks um, here, which is tiny when we look at actually the total total number and removing that actually removes a, a safety issue where we know there is a hot spot where people are actually getting injured. Um, for us not to do that, to vote against that, is completely abhorrent and it would I would be shocked if people did not support that based on the fact that we know that this is a safety issue and we have in front of us a solution that we can put in place now to actually stop the accidents that we know are happening. Thank you. All right, so I'll put the motion. All the, oh, Jake, sorry, do you want to speak to I'll us? I'll close the debate. Thank you, yeah. Mover. Um, look, I, this is really simple. Um, I think, as Sarah Best said, this is a purely an argument between convenience and safety, and for anyone to choose convenience over safety is shameful. It's banal, it's cynical, and inherently it's quite political. So I'm happy to support this. So I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against? No. That's carried. <laughs> All right. Could be a time delay, but yeah. Can can we have it recorded, please? If there's any doubt, let's have it recorded. Those against. So against, we've got Yanni, Sam, Phil, and Aaron. So calling for a division. So let's just go for a division. All right. So let's take the division. Um, Councillor Templeton. Councillor McLennan? No. Councillor McDonald? No. Councillor Johansson? No. Councillor Galloway? That was an I. <laughs> Councillor Donovan? Doesn't appear so. Councillor Coker? Aye. Councillor Chen? Yes. Um, the mayor's advised that she'll be sitting back from this one. Yep. Councillor Scandrit? Aye. Councillor mm -hmm. Major? No. Councillor Keogh? No. Councillor Goff is not here. Councillor Davidson? Aye. Councillor Cotter? Is that an aye? Pauline, you're a yes, yep. Yeah. Can't hear you. Um, 
Thumb. Put your thumb up, Pauline, if you're thumb. voting for it. There we yes. go. <laughs> okay. We got I had a there. feeling you would be. Two. Put your thumb up, Catherine, if you're voting <laughs> for it. Is there some difficulty with people hearing? Oh, yeah, Catherine's, <laughs> Catherine's put her thumb up, so she's a yes. Thank you, Catherine. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, one, two, three, four against. Okay, so that's carried. Thank